it's most compassionate to both the mother and the child to say, what does the scripture teach about this issue? It's back to what does the Bible say? And so I think it's important for two reasons to have those, those sort of questions dealt with. The first reason is because, as you alluded to, those cases are used really as the primary arguments for abortion. You know, very few people argue that I ought to be able to, to have an abortion because I want to make more money. I mean, you don't hear that argument out there. It happens, but you don't hear that posted. It, it usually falls back on these really difficult cases, when in reality, there's such a huge percentage of the the decisions that are made for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and a, a minuscule percentage, and we un unveil that in the book, of those cases that are often pointed to as the sort of argumentation for why there should be abortion. So I think you have to, you have to understand that um, in order to think about this whole issue of abortion accurately. In addition to that, a lot of genuine Christian people are struggling with that. They hear that in the culture. And of course, as believers, what happens? Because we, we have a, a new heart, because we have the compassion of Christ. We have compassion for those in those situations, you know, a, a woman who's been raped or, or a, a case of incest where someone has, and, and that also is rape, but just of a different form. Or you have a, a child with significant disabilities and you realize the parents are going to have the responsibility of care. You have a compassion for that and you ought to have a compassion for that. But at the same time, you ought to have a compassion that reflects the scripture and how God would think compassion should be demonstrated both toward the victims in those situations and toward the children who are also victims in that situation.